This week our subjects are the creepy crawlies of Cybertron, some of the first Transformers to ever have beast modes, the Insecticons. The original Insecticons joined the Transformers toy line in its second year, 1985, and were divided into two groups. The smaller of the Insecticon toys were originally released by Hasbro's Japanese partner Takara as part of the Diaclone toy line the previous year, as the Insector Robo. They consisted of the Stag Beetle Shrapnel, a sadist with the power to manipulate electricity, the Twisted Bombshell, a rhinoceros beetle who could control minds using his cerebro shells, and Kickback, a grasshopper who hid a love of blackmail beneath a charming facade. The larger deluxe Insecticon figures had different origins. They were created by Takatoku Toys for the Armored Insect Battalion Beatrice series. After Takatoku went out of business, the designs were acquired by Bandai, and from there were licensed by Hasbro for the Transformers line. This quartet included the team leader Venom, a paranoid cicada, merciless unrelenting rhinoceros beetle Barrage, kleptomaniac stag beetle Chop Shop, and the combat-craving Locust Ransack. But the deluxe Insecticon status as Bandai toys would be their undoing. A previous attempt to incorporate another Bandai toy, Jetfire, into the Transformers animated series had been fraught with difficulties, which you can learn more about if you check out the basics on Jetfire. Rather than go through all that again, the deluxe Insecticons just wind up not being included in the cartoon at all, leaving the trio of smaller Insecticons to take the spotlight. Introduced late in the cartoon's first season, Shrapnel, Bombshell and Kickback had been part of Megatron's crew when the Transformers crash landed on Earth four million years ago. Unlike the other Transformers, they didn't go down with their ship. They fled in an escape pod and adapted for life on Earth by taking on insect forms. They functioned as a splinter group that operated outside the Decepticon command structure, only occasionally joining forces with Megatron, and just as often coming into conflict with him when their own schemes and ambitions clashed with his. Most episodes depicted the trio as being led by Shrapnel, who had a memorable speech quirk that saw him repeat the last word of his sentences. Let's give our visitors a fatal welcome! welcome. The cartoon bestowed the Insecticons with multiple additional abilities beyond the ones described in their character bios. They could eat just about anything, and feeding their seemingly unending hunger was their primary motivation. Through a combination of Bombshell's Insectashells and Shrapnel's Clone Beams, they could also create clones of themselves, multiplying the Insecticon threat into a huge ravenous swarm that devoured all in its path. This clone swarm became such an iconic aspect of the Insecticons that many years later, in 2004, Takara would re-release the three Insecticon toys in their original Diaclone colour schemes as new characters who represented the clones. Now over in the Marvel comic the Insecticons weren't such significant characters. They served in the court of the Decepticon dictator Lord Straxus on Cybertron, only coming to Earth in the present day at Megatron's request. They lacked the cloning abilities and the hunger of their cartoon counterparts, but they did possess the ability to shrink down to the size of real-life insects, which made them well suited to espionage. As with the cartoon, the deluxe Insecticons didn't appear in the comic either, but a few of them did make brief cameos in the UK series. The Insecticon toys were discontinued in 1987, which meant it was odd when 1986's The Transformers the Movie killed the characters off a year early and had them recreated into new Decepticons by the evil Unicron. Shrapnel and Kickback became The Sweeps, while Bombshell became Cyclonus. But you can watch The Basics on Cyclonus for more on the debate surrounding the identity of that character. And this marked the end for the Insecticons in the original Generation 1 series, save for Bombshell, who returned in 1991 with a European exclusive Action Master figure. The significantly greater exposure he, Shrapnel and Kickback had enjoyed ensured that they eclipsed their deluxe counterparts in both the memory of fans and in the media of today. While the deluxe Insecticons have been limited to rare appearances in comic books, the more famous trio, and in particular the cartoon's depiction of them as part of an all-consuming swarm, has gone on to prove a lasting influence on future interpretations of the Insecticon concept. 
but not right away. 1996's Beast Wars was the first series to revive the Insecticon name, but it used it not to refer to a group of Transformers, but to a single individual, an evil Predacon stag beetle named Insecticon, who was at one point planned for inclusion in the Beast Wars cartoon, only to be dropped during production. Next came 2004's Transformers Energon, which continued the use of the name for an individual bot. As seen in Dreamwave Productions Energon comic book, Energon Insecticon was one of several disgruntled Decepticons who joined forces with the alien Alpha Quintesson to form the breakaway Terrorcon faction. The Energon cartoon, on the other hand, took things in a very different direction. Here, there was no individual Insecticon. Instead, Insecticons were a kind of identical mass-produced Terrorcon drone created by Alpha Quintesson. This dichotomy would continue into the live-action movie universe. Some pieces of media presented the Insecticon of this world as a singular, full-size individual, but others, principally the films themselves, depicted a swarm of identical tiny bots. Despite Hasbro's best efforts, it seemed that the name just lent itself better to a concept than it did to a single character. And it was with the onset of the aligned continuity that they basically surrendered to that notion, and gave up trying to make Insecticon work as an individual's name. But rather than simply return to the original Generation 1 idea of Insecticons as a mere subgroup, they went even further, reimagining them as a distinct, naturally occurring subspecies of Cybertronian life. The 2012 Fall of Cybertron video game, and later its prequel, 2014's Rise of the Dark Spark, detailed how the Insecticons emerged from deep within Cybertron, and were discovered by the Decepticon scientist Shockwave, who conducted various experiments on them, altering their forms and finding ways to control them. Most were nothing more than non-transforming animals, but certain, more evolved members of the species possessed robot modes and intelligent minds, who Shockwave recruited into the Decepticons. And these were, of course, new incarnations of the classic Insecticon trio, Shrapnel, now renamed Sharpshot due to Hasbro no longer holding the trademark on his original name, Bombshell, now Hardshell for the same reason, and Kickback who, for some reason, had Shrapnel's classic quirk of speech repetition instead of Sharpshot, but was the only one of the three to get a new toy in the Transformers Generations line. This take on the Insecticons was also featured that same year in the Transformers Prime animated series, in which a hive of the beasts was found on Earth. A genetic connection allowed the treacherous Decepticon Arachnid to control the Insecticons, and she almost succeeded in using them to overthrow Megatron before she was defeated by the Autobots, which resulted in the Insecticons, freed from her control, falling under Megatron's command. The Prime Insecticons were mostly nameless, identical drones, distinguished by their shrieking, whooping cry. But the series did feature its own version of Hardshell, and another named Bombshock, both of whom received toys. A few of these Insecticons also appeared in the 2015 sequel series Robots in Disguise, along with several other insectoid transformers, including new versions of Kickback and even Chop Shop. The idea of the Insecticons as a natural Cybertronian species would even be adapted back into Generation 1 continuity, in media such as the Transformers Devastation video game and IDW Publishing's comic books. In IDW stories, the Decepticon scientist Deluge experimented on members of the primitive Insecticon race to create a new breed of warrior, resulting in the successful evolution of three of the creatures into the classic trio. The numerous failures, on the other hand, were reduced to deformed monstrosities and were cast out into the wilds of Cybertron where they menaced the Autobots. This mutant Insecticon swarm was eventually rounded up and exterminated by Ironhide and Metroplex, save for one who was domesticated by the Autobot Sunstreaker and given the name Bob. Bob's still around today, now part of his own little legion of Transformers super pets, with Jetfire's drone Doc and Thundercracker's dog Buster. As of 2018, all three of the classic Insecticon trio have received new toys as part of the Transformers Generations line. Bombshell's got his name back, Shrapnel now goes by Scrapnel, and he's even been recolored to create a new version of Chop Shop. 
Uh, whether the other deluxe Insecticons will ever get their day in the sun again is a question that I can't answer. Hasbro are the ones you're going to have to bug about that. And those are the basics on the Insecticons. Tell me about your favorite version or your favorite character in the comments. And if you enjoy the show, remember to like, share, subscribe, and visit Patreon to keep it going.